What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a good day. We're having a very good day because it is new t-shirt day. There's no one here. I'm alone. See, we like to drive, you like to drive, but sometimes we drive a little too fast, and that means we're going to meet one of America's fine law enforcement vehicles. But there's a bunch of them. How do you keep track? Well, we've made a shirt that basically shows the species of cop cars. Remember those posters on the wall when you were a kid of dinosaurs and birds and peregrine falcons? It's like that. We call it predators of American highways, because if you speed and break the law, you get chased and you become the prey and you get a ticket. And before you get all upset and you get triggered and you start getting real mad on the internet about us using the word predator, just relax. It's a joke. Remember jokes? Remember jokes before the internet criticized everything you said? Okay? It's a joke. And we've shown it to cops, CHP officers, friends, family, enthusiasts. Everybody thinks it's funny and they know what it's about. So just relax, okay? Now we've got these awesome stencil drawings with Latin-ish type names below them. Help you keep track of what you're seeing. Cars like the uh, Hauntus Mirrorius, you know, the thing you see in all of your rearview mirror nightmares. Got the toughest Aperium. Then there's the Officerus Obscurus, which is the Chevy Caprice. Basically the automotive version of a king snake and a coral snake. And then finally, the Investigator Citationus. Now we're selling them in three colors. The fabric's really, really soft and the fit is very good. Uh, just for reference, this is a large, and I am 5'10", about 170 pounds. Um, if you're European, this would be considered a quad XL, okay? They're only going to be on sale for two weeks, from July 25th to August 8th. So, hit the link in the description, go to our Teespring store, and help support the people that make the content you enjoy for free, okay? Once again, only on sale for two weeks, from July 25th to August 8th. Three colors, funny shirts, we're stoked about them, help support us. Thank you for watching. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a, well, cold day in the canyons for Los Angeles, uh, by Los Angeles standards, by anyone living in Minnesota or anywhere else, it's like a summer day. So um, we're here in uh, Robert's Corvette. Robert, how you doing? Good, nice Thank you for driving up. We did a little early one today. Um, Tell us what you brought. This is a really nice custom painted car. Yeah. But uh, to tell people what well, you It's a about. brownstone paint job off of the Silverados. Um, it's got long tube headers, Catless X pipe. I uh, installed the DSX flex fuel kit, and it's a uh, dyno tuned by Tad. Uh, it's making 468, 474 at the rear wheels. I dyno it at a, a European Auto Source in Anaheim. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And the lowering bolts. West Coast Corvette Lauren bolts, and it's got 305, 35, 19 rear tires, same ones that the GT350 uses. Right, so you've got, basically you have the same power at the wheels that the car comes with at the crank, and then your tires are, it comes with 285 rear stock, so you're up to 305. So you're kind of, uh, tire-wise, you're about the same size as if you'd gotten like the Z51 package, but this is not, this it's is just not. It's one LT. base Corvette, one LT. Um, I mean, it still comes with an amazing array of nice stuff for, you know, a base car. Like, where you're talking, this car weighs under 3,300 pounds. You know, you've got CD, sat-nav, like, AC. I mean, you've got basically all the, like, niceties that I seek in a car. Um, I just had this discussion yesterday on a, on a podcast of what, a, what would I get if I could get only five things in a car. And the only one other than what this has would be, like, uh, radar cruise control. It's sick, but, you know... Anything else? Like, I don't need massage sheets and cooled seats. I don't need yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So this is cool. This is just entry-level Corvette, basically, with inexpensive power mods that produce huge results, which yeah. is really <laughs> impressive. Um, I mean, you can buy the, the E85 kit. You can buy. You install it yourself. I install that. Install the headers. You install the headers. Have someone do a tune so that it works well, and then you're making another 100 horsepower, basically. And at the time, it was reading 51% ethanol. You know, while it was oh, being right. dynoed, while he was doing the dyno tune. Is that wi our winter gas? Is that what that is, right? Oh, uh, I guess, yeah. The E85 just has more regular gas than ethanol. Yeah. So. Well, uh, yeah, let's see how it do, man. I mean, it's got a lower center of gravity. It's got a little more traction, and it's got a whole lot of power. And obviously, it's one of the best platforms, or one of the, the, the legacy is one of the best platforms basically ever put on Earth. Corvette, which 
is Cor Corvus have a problem, which is that the engines now are so common. I mean, this is an LT1, not an LS, but they sound the same. That they sound commonplace. You're like, oh yeah, it's an LS. It's not like an exotic engine sound, even though it sounds awesome. I mean, you can't ignore that. I, I, I have arguments with my friends about what engine is uh, the best sound. And one guy says V10, and flat sixes have never been my favorite. They're starting to grow on me a little bit, but they just like, I don't know, eights just have, eight, V8s are just V8s, you know, there's like power to it, depth to it, it's raucous, it's kind of like, it's got a little bit of, you know, get the F out of my way sound going on. It's like I come from a line of Mustangs, I had the two valve single overhead cam, the three valve single overhead cam, the four valve dual overhead cam, both in the Cobra and in the S197 5.0, those definitely sound a lot better. Well, they sound gorgeous, but they just don't have that low end grunt, you know. And this yeah. thing, it sounds like a tractor, you know. But it's, I'm willing to take that hit for the performance that it gives me. It's it's interesting how different engines sound very distinct. Like, um, you know, like a big block Ford and big block Chevy. Just that little different firing order sounds totally different to me. Like I can pick a Mustang out of anywhere. They just it almost sounds like. Uh, LS's or V8 or Chevy V8's to me sound tighter. It sounds like the cylinders are like more closely lined up, like brrrr. And uh, Mustang engines, Ford engines have a little, it's just like the cylinders are separating. Each sound is just like a, a, a separated thump. Yeah, like a little gurgle that you hear. Yeah, it's just yeah. Bah, 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 bah. And we've, we've caught some already, not shocking. Um, Stock suspension, just lowering bolts, just lowering right? Just bolts, everything else is stock on the suspension. Okay, so this is, for, for people, you know, watching, listening while we uh, find a place to turn around for this person, if you get the Z51 package on a Corvette, they change a lot. You know, most of the attention uh, in the news went to like, you get an E-diff, you get dry sump uh, cooling system, sorry, dry sump oil, you get uh, a diff cooler, but you also got new stiffer shocks and sway bars, which, I would say make a big difference because this is definitely it's moving around a little bit like in mid corner this road has it's hard to see on the cameras but this road definitely has little undulations in most of the corners and the straightaways so it kind of tests how how compliant and composed uh, a chassis is drove the ZR1, the new one, and he's like, you know, you can add more power to these cars, and it just feels like a faster, it just feels like a sped up version of a base Corvette. Everything is just happening faster, but it doesn't feel like you've overwhelmed any of the uh, handling or braking components, and this feels like that. You know, it doesn't feel like Oh wow, this thing is just out of its mind. You've added too much power. It doesn't know what to do. It's just, okay, great platform. Um, we got electric, electronic steering with good feedback, good weight. I think it does a really good impression of what the front wheels are doing and how much they're gripping. You know what, I'm gonna just, does it have a sport mode? Yeah, uh, turn left. Let's go to sport mode. Uh, Counterclockwise. Traction light was going crazy, even with like I don't think not going that fast. We'll see what it does. Um, it was in track. It was in track it mode. Was in track. It was indeed. So it's quiet. I just want to see. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yep. And the then you get on and it's loud. Uh, so what? What is your uh, your use been of this car? You know, why'd you get it? I basically I I was kind of over the S197 5.0. And, you know, just like every other Mustang 5.0 driver, exhaust, intake, tune. I was on a uh, Mickey Thompson, uh, the street comp tires. Yeah, they're, they're whatever. It was a fun car. I really liked it. I got really used to it. I was able to whip it sideways around corners and things. Um, but I just wanted something different, you know. Uh, I always knew the Corvette was on another level. Yeah. It's going to hurt some feelings, but I, it was just on another level. And then I drove. test drove a GT350 and the GT350 you know it revs the hell but it just it still left me wanting more in this thing like it just felt so light 
a little bit more power, and so I went ahead and I did a little bit of research. Three minor bolt ons to tune, and it's I like it. It's healthy. It's good. It's real healthy. I would, you know? I would agree with that. It, these things are like undeniable. You know, I think they they suffer from uh, just being seen too often. I will, I will say that like I'm going 45 in that corner, which is the speed limit here, and the traction light was kicking on, which is really weird. Um, Stock run flats in the front. That okay. So 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 we have Pilot Super Sports in the back. Yeah, still Pilot Super Sports, but they're the zero pressure run but they're flats. They're the run flats in the front. Oh, okay. It's only 245 width up front. Oh, okay, so you upgraded. So the rear tires are 305s now, yeah. which are upgraded, but the fronts are still 245. I got gotcha. you. That's another thing you get. You know, if you get. And I, it all depends on the intent of your car. I'm not yeah. trying to tell you, uh, should have gotten like ZR1, Z51 pack. I was just, that's, it just, you can get a lot of different packages with the Corvette. And it's all about what do you want to do with the car? Where do you drive? You know, what was your intention? It was a commuter for about a year. So, <laughs> you know, it was my commuter every single day. Um, they're not comfortable. These things aren't the most comfortable cars. Uh, I ended up, I, I was gonna say sorry. <laughs> I cut yeah. you. Your car cut you off there. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't turn it on for about a month. You know, I got myself a Gen 2 Raptor, and I daily drive that. I love the thing. And then, um, yeah, I just didn't touch this thing. I drove it today, and I didn't realize like how damn low I am to the ground. You know, it brings it back into pers perspective, like how low you are to the ground. You are very low. I mean, dude, front visibility on this is excellent. Uh, I've noticed a lot. A lot of cars now, because of pedestrian crash safety standards, the hoods are taller. You know, they have to have, um, basically there's like a minimum distance between a person's standing height and where they would hit your hood. And then there's a distance um, between the top of the hood and the engine. So, you know, like, um, like you can't buy the new ZR1 in Europe because the supercharger is out of the hood. And they have a law, like if the first thing a person contacts is a rock hard engine block, you can't sell it there. So. A lot of cars seem to have this taller and taller hood line, less visibility, like Mustangs are starting to get squeezed a bit. Um, Camaro was, that was actually a good design choice. But this, I mean, especially with the, the curvature and the cowl there, you got so much front visibility on what the road's doing. It's really good. I would say, comfort-wise, I can see how over a, a long period of time it would, it would wear on you a bit. But, you know, the, the seating position's really good. Er ergonomically, like, these armrests are perfect for where your elbows go. Keep your shoulders relaxed on a long drive. Um, does it drone on the highway at all? How's the exhaust sound? No, what I do is I just put it in sport and the uh, butterfly valve stock uh, mufflers, they just close anytime that you're out of second gear or you're over 30 miles an hour, they'll just close. So it's nice and quiet. Let's see. Oh yeah. All right, so now we're in third. And then you jump on it. <laughs> right there, the it's, it's addictive, cool. very addictive. Yeah. It's pretty, fun. It's it feels, feels like a very tight uh, car. I mean, this is four years old. You've put a good amount of miles on it, and not a squeak in here. Um, it's cool. I can actually feel some of these little road imperfections in my fingers. You know, even though it's an electronic steering wheel, I'm not. I don't have like a hundred percent communication on what the front tires are doing, but I can feel like the little vibrations and changes in the road surface, which is pretty awesome. It's just, it definitely has that handling imbalance. Like now that, I, I should have asked before, but now that I know the fronts are 245s and the rear 305s, yeah, uh, yeah that makes a lot of sense. The thing that killed me even stock, which is the reason for the rear tire upgrade, was the fact that it wouldn't grip on run flats. It just doesn't grip. Well, especially you're making, you know, 600 horsepower at the crank and you jump on it and I'm sure it was like, the tire's like, we give up. What are you doing? It's, I'd say more like 530 at the crank. So it's making it down. If you're making, wait, if you're making yeah, four, 460 making wheel? 468, 474. So I'm, I'm right in line about 530. Oh, for 10% loss? Yeah. Okay. All right. These are, man, okay. We're going <laughs> to, yeah. traction's just going, what do you, how do you, how do you, how do you? It's trying to keep you from killing yourself. I don't think, I feel like it's a little more invasive than that. Yeah. 
um, unless Push you feel like we're about to die. Yeah. But I, it's just, uh, it's surprising, I guess, how low, a, at, at, at the speed it's intervening at. Mm-hmm. Let's like, let's see what it does as a test. That was, yeah. okay, so that was 42 miles an hour yeah. on a pretty gent, like, you know, big curve, and it was still flashing. And, and for the record, everybody, the speed limit's 45, and I know that they have recommended speeds on turns, but uh, I think our audience knows that oftentimes the speed limit and recommended speeds can be the same thing. So I'm, it's definitely trying to prevent uh, its market from dying. So what's your what's your plan with this? We talked before about uh, well, you know you've had this couple of years like I've, what's I've next? had it. I like it. It's fun for what it is. You know, it's a great handling car. It's undeniable, and especially as compared to the things that I've had and I've driven. Mm-hmm. But still coming from Mustangs, honestly, I'd probably end up selling this thing and getting myself one of the uh, S197 GT500s. And you know, a lot of people lose their minds. Why? You know, they handle like shit. <laughs> you know, like, well, no, I'm not going to kill anybody. Um, in the 11 to 12s right now, they have that 2.9 liter Whipple upgrade, like I was telling you about. Um, it's like four grand, and it'll get you to over 700 horse. You know, and I, I miss Mustangs. You know, I miss that solid axle. Like, to me, yeah, sure, it doesn't handle as well, but it's a lot of fun. It is a lot it's of a fun. It's a lot of fun. I think the last GT500 I drove was like 2012 yeah we filmed it for tst and traction control uh, in that was like an idea it yeah. was like they put the light in but they yeah. forgot to put a system in because yeah. bone stock you know second gear third gear you're just watching this light go and the, and the, the axle's just stepping out i mean it's hilarious and yeah. it that car i will say is the closest thing i think i've driven a, uh, the closest modern car <coughs> sorry let me rephrase this it's the newest car that feels and gives you the same sensation as like an old muscle yeah. car. Cause yeah. it's just, it's a laugh. It's like loud, live axle. It just feels like it'll survive whatever you do to it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of a giggle, man. Yeah, it's they're, they're a lot of fun to drive. They're a Especially lot of fun Especially when you drive. get to like that limit or what you perceive to be the limit. It's just, they're, they're funner to me to drive. I can that, understand that. The GT500 and um, I just miss it. That, I've never had that wine and I really want that wine. Oh, it's gonna you know? addictive. I'm not, you know, trying to lap Laguna Seca, you know, faster than everybody else. I'm just trying to have fun. See, so that's how you're, you're living right. Because, because, yeah. you know, people are going to be commenting like, this is a better handling car, better platform. And you guys are right. Like, if you want to lap, if you want to lap a track, this is better with yeah. some front tires, of course, than like a GT500. But what do you want to do with a car? What do you, what experience do you want? You want to have fun? You uh, want to just just hoon around a bit like dude gt500 is, yeah it's, it's the way a, it's to go giggle, yeah and i know you can get the a and a supercharger for this thing and it's carb legal so you won't have a problem passing smoke but i just missed the gt500 it's not gonna have yeah, that wine you know and that, that's just what i want to do and that's probably what i'm gonna end up doing in a couple months i'll probably end up that's awesome yeah. you know because you've had this experience and now you can go have a different one yeah. you know and just just keep having yep. having vehicle keep, experience, keep man. Fun. Yeah, yeah, keep switching it fun. up. Well, thank you very much for driving up here early in the morning. I appreciate yeah, it. No getting, getting real chilly. Um, everybody, thank you for watching. Thanks for uh, watching the one takes and all of you who listen to our podcast. Check out the Smoking Tire podcast. We put them up Tuesday, Thursday, and we also um, air them live on YouTube when we record them. So if you uh, have that time in your schedule, keep an eye on the YouTube channel for those announcements, and we put them up. And uh, Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we will see you later.